On this week's BartenderHQ.com podcast, we have the guys from Mover and Shaker. They make the awesome pins that you keep seeing on Instagram. So, as I mentioned, guys, the uh, guests on this week's show, we have uh, two guests joining us from Florida. Um, so it was obviously super easy for us to get the timing sorted out. But the, these guys make awesome little pin badges that you can decorate your apron with or your uniform, depending where you work. If you work at Fridays, you will know exactly what these little pins are, and everyone's seen them in the past. And these guys make some of the coolest ones in the industry with Angostura, with Fanet, uh, with a bunch of other cool brands. So let's get straight into the chat. So this week, guys, we have Nicholas and Matt from uh, Mover and Shaker on the line. Uh, so these guys uh, make awesome bartender pins. Guys, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Awesome. So you, you, awesome, man. Uh, you're going to have to kind of introduce yourselves properly and uh, maybe even get your names right better than I do. And, <laughs> um, and just tell these guys how you've got to where you are today. How have you got from wherever you've come from, to making awesome pins for bartenders. Sure, yeah. Uh, so, again, my name is Nick. Uh, this is Matt. We're from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, so northeast region of Florida. Uh, I've been bartending for about three to four years now. Um, about a year and a half ago, I had an idea. I just started getting into aprons, and I uh, wanted to take a page actually out of the Friday's Flair book uh, and kind of bring back Flair for bartenders. Um, so... Matt here, he's one of my best friends. Uh, we grew up skateboarding, known each other for like 15 years now. Uh, he's super into graphic design. He knows all the back end stuff that I, I know nothing about. Uh, so I <laughs> reached out to him. I had a few ideas as far as pins and uh, really just want to decorate uh, the aprons for bartenders, uh, specifically the craft bartenders because they didn't really have anything like that at the time. Awesome. And uh, I know like uh, when you say flare, you're talking about the flare pins and like the uniform flare side of things. Obviously, we talk quite a bit about flare bartending and flipping bottles around. So just so that everyone's aware, when we say flare in this episode, we are talking about uniform flare. Um, the, the pins that the guys at Fridays and other bars wear on their, uh, you know, on the braces or on aprons or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And and what was it that, that sort of made you think, right, this is what I need to be doing now? I know I know you say like the craft movement coming through and things sure. like that. Um, like did you have a particularly badass apron? Was it one of these cool leather ones or did you go denim? Where, where yeah, did you yeah. go? So I actually did have a leather apron. I uh I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram, but uh Search and Rescue is a really awesome brand. They're out of uh Vancouver. Um and I just kept seeing these aprons that bartenders were wearing and I Splurge on one is, is pretty expensive. It's about $300 American or uh, US dollars. And uh, just had this idea. I was like, you know, nobody's doing anything like this right now. Uh, there's Love and Victory. Uh, she's super awesome. She's out in New York. She was doing just little cocktail pins. But I really wanted to bring some of the more iconic bottles that craft bartenders are using. Uh, so our first two uh, pins were actually Angostura and Fernet. And I uh, had Matt kind of dig through some archives of old designs and uh, we just released those. So I had a buddy at the time who was really into wrestling and he had a whole company dedicated to wrestling pins. And uh, he kind of walked us through, you know, what we needed to do to get set up. And uh, in the beginning, it was all just like for fun. It was yeah. it was just me wanting to like make something cool for my friends. And uh, it just kind of like sparked this crazy like wave of momentum where, uh, you know, we made one and then we got requests to like make just tons of different things. And and now I think we have over like 40, 50 products in our online store, which is insane. No, it's awesome. I mean, with uh, so so with things like the Fanet pins and stuff like that, did you have to get permission from them or did you kind of do it down the back door and then they were like, hey, guys, this is really cool. Do some more stuff for us. Or is it all completely under yeah. the radar and we'll like uh, anti-SEO this for Fanet so that they never find yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, so that was... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I want to answer this, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, in the beginning, it was kind of just like, you know, we're going to just do it for fun. And, you know, if we get in trouble, we'll apologize and, you know, ask forgiveness later kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they actually, you know, were really receptive because we had that uh, kind of cult following in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and it just worked out. And since then, we've worked with them very heavily. And, 
it's been a really good relationship. Nowadays, we kind of stay away from stuff like that <laughs> now yeah. that we're a little bigger. Um, but we do tons of custom orders for, for some of the top companies, which is really awesome and we really, really enjoy. Um, and it's something we had to learn how to do and uh, just turn it into like a, a nice little thriving company, which has been really cool. Absolutely. And I like, I know you said you've got like 40, 50 pins in there now. How often are you coming out with a new pin uh, these days? Oh, we're doing it mostly every single Sunday. We try to drop a new pin. That's usually how it goes. But if we have more stuff we want to release, then we'll just kind of drop it throughout the week. Some stuff we just don't even announce. We just put it up and let people find it on their own. Yeah. It really just depends how we're feeling that week, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so so it really depends on like the creative kind of out, output we're, we're at at the moment. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So we're pushing super hard on the pins for the past probably three, four months. And uh, my creative juices were just flowing like nonstop. Um, right now we're kind of trying to move like more into apparel clothing um, mm-hmm. just so we have like a full line of products uh, we want to be like an overall over or a all-encompassing brand um, so eventually it will be bar products you know socks beanies uh, shirts outerwear bar, like all sorts of barware uh, so yeah. pins are just kind of like our foothold uh, into the bartending world and we got that really cool following and now we're just kind of seeing where we can go with it so it's been, awesome. been really fun yeah, I mean, it's it's just such a quirky kind of thing to start off with, with the little pins. And also, I guess, it's it's a great product for you guys to start off with because it doesn't take up, like, a whole bunch of, like, three rooms of your house. Like, they're oh, small. Your houses. <laughs> yeah. Show them that bag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got, like... I don't know if this is going to be a video thing, but you can see it. Oh, yeah. This is just, like, half of an order uh, going to a larger brand, you know. Oh, just amazing. Just imagine how... 50 of those sitting in your house like yeah. Matt does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So are they Sip Smith's ones? What's that? Are they Sip Smith's ones? Uh, no, those are actually, uh, these are really cool. They're, uh, I have one on the back. Oh. Are the viewers going to be, is this a video podcast or just a podcast? Yeah. So so okay. we, we do the main podcast, but we're also going to throw this onto, that it looks really yeah. cool. Yeah, so, so we're going to throw this onto YouTube speak. as well. Awesome. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, for our friends, uh, a bar here in Florida, but they do an awesome cocktail, and I don't know if you guys have it over uh, over across the pond, but uh, Absolute Elix, they have some really okay. awesome copperware. Uh, so this this is actually a in person a giant flamingo that you put a like three or four person cocktail into. Nice. So they approached us to do this little pin. I'll show you one more time. So super cool. Yeah, very nice. So yeah, so uh, you're not just doing stuff for liquor brands now. You're also kind of doing custom stuff into some of the bars, I guess. Yeah, so we've been doing it for a while now. Um, you know, we kind of keep that behind the scenes. Every now and then, we'll post uh, some custom work just to you know drum up a little hype. Um, but yeah, we've done some of the the top liquor brands over here in America and, and across the world. It's been really cool. Um, Matt does a lot of fulfillment and shipment, but it's it's yeah. always awesome to see when we get an order from like Indonesia or, or we're actually doing a ton of sales in Australia, which is yeah, really shout interesting. Yeah, out to Australia. <laughs> like, we don't, we don't know happens, Australia but... and New Zealand are, are yeah. killing it, and uh, we really appreciate it. So it's cool to see, uh, you know, from a year and a half ago, just this little little small idea that we both had turn into something that people in Australia, you know, walk around in, in our mover and shaker year. So yeah, it's pretty man. Awesome. <laughs> so so do you guys like have a, a particular pin each maybe that has a special place for you whether it's one of the early ones or one that you you're just like especially for you probably matt one that the the creative came out really well for you yeah do you have any favorite um, design ones <laughs> there's just so many that we've worked on now i, um, I think one of the uh breakthrough pins i got right here um that really meant a lot to both of us were the pursue happiness yeah. pins we did for uh John Lemaire was a really awesome figure in our community here in America, mm-hmm. uh, and his kind of motto in life was uh, pursue happiness. Nah, that's and awesome, man. He recently passed away, so uh, some people in the bar community reached out to us to do those pins, and uh, we raised over fifteen thousand uh, dollars for his family. So that was oh, that's amazing. It was a huge moment, and and not just for us. It was seeing the whole bar community come together yeah, for that concept. Um, yeah just meant a lot and it, and it really shows kind of what we can do together. So that's kind of been the ideology behind Mover and Shaker is to build this like really core organic following. And then we donate a ton of money to different people that we believe in 
And uh, it's kind of just our platform for, for a positive movement, which has been great. No, that's that's a really cool story. And it's great that you're able to kind of tie everything together and be able to, to kind of um, give to the bartender community as well, because obviously there's a lot of brands out there that make huge amounts of money off of the bartenders and things like that. I mean, it's it's actually one of the things with Bartender HQ, although I don't give much money into the bartender community, it's because I take nothing out of it either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so this, this is a podcast that's a labour of love for me, and I've always just wanted to be able to help bartenders, especially people that are working in like regular pubs and regular kind of bars that haven't got this kind of craft element yet to sure. have a place where they can find it for free and learn and, and, ah. and move up. Um, so uh, so that's that's really awesome. One of the other pins that really caught my eye just then was the space shuttle on the back of the Fernet oh, yeah. bottle, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. Killed yeah. by, kill by Fernet. Yeah, yes. man. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar and maybe your listeners are familiar with the Fernet coins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the challenge yes, coins. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, so ever since I, I heard about Fernet coins, I always wanted to do a, a design for them. And, and being in Florida, we are known for you know space shuttles and, and NASA mm -hmm. other launches in Cape Canaveral, or did at one point in time. Um, and so I always joked about a Fernet bottle being you know the fuel for bartenders. So yeah, that one just kind of like... A lot of the stuff just starts as kind of silly puns, and we yeah. just play off of them. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, no... <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm just like super into space stuff as well at the minute. So like, I don't know if you've get, got to see any of the SpaceX launches from where you are as well, or any of that. Yeah. We can see it in the sky. Yeah. But no, yeah. Yeah. We haven't actually like, gone down there and seen it. Most people just think it's aliens. Have it, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but I mean, I I would be down there every time, like especially when they're landing as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's, when they're bringing it's things dangerous. back. <laughs> So uh, yeah, no, that's that's really cool. Um, so is what else? I love the fact that you're drinking out of a tiki mug as well. Is that the Stormtrooper? This is my tea mug. Uh, this is yeah, Stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. The Beeline Creative uh, tiki mugs. <laughs> Shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I love it. And you've got like DJ decks behind you. Like this place is like a party capital, isn't it? You've got there. <laughs> this is our office. We got it all. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. <laughs> So is, is there anything else you want to uh, kind of explain about the brand and, and, and where you came from? or Like, where, where do you guys bartend? Do you still bartend now? Yeah, so I still bartend. Um, I work at a place called Grape and Grain here in Jacksonville. It's really cool. It's a package store on one side and then uh, a, a craft bar on the other. We have a nice. speakeasy as well in the back. Um, so it's really cool. So it's taught me a bunch of different spirits and wine um, and <laughs> kind of time management as far as helping the retail side and, and bartending at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. I also work for a really awesome whiskey company here in the U.S., uh, Angels Envy, which we'll, okay. be our, we'll be making our way across the sea, I think, by 2020. So maybe awesome. you'll see me over there <laughs> at some point in Absol time. Absolutely. Uh, Hit me up. We'll, uh, we'll hook yeah. up. Absolutely. Yeah, so I do a lot of brand work for them. Uh, Matt can kind of tell you a little bit about his background. It's yeah. uh, totally different. But... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't come from a bartending background at all. I actually was working in insurance, and I, okay. I was working a desk job and also doing some freelance graphic design as well on the side. So then Nick reached out to me, and that's kind of what started all this. And I've since <laughs> parted my ways with insurance, and now this is my main, main squeeze right here. So we've just been focusing on this and it's been awesome so far so it's it definitely been, uh, sounds more fun than insurance yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot more fun I mean, i'm still at a desk but at least this time i'm doing like what i want to do and yeah it doesn't feel like work of course we get to work on like a bunch of really cool projects with really big brands and sometimes i don't realize how big <laughs> these projects are because i'm not as well i don't know everything about the community but i've met a lot of really cool people so far and i'm really Everybody seems to be very nice and brings me on in. So, yeah, yeah man. That's, that's one of the best parts about what we've done so far is we've built this amazing network, uh, you know, mostly here in the U.S. But I think me and him could travel pretty much to any state and, uh, you know, just post something on Instagram and somebody would let us crash on their couch. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, of course. And uh, throw a party at their bar. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that that's open for when you're in the U.K. next. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I've, I've not been over there, so that's that's on the list for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, I'm, I, I, 
I'm involved with a lot of different distilleries and stuff over here as well, so we can get you around to some fun places. That'd be uh, amazing. Definitely do the tour. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we extend that invite to you as well, if you ever right, thank you. <laughs> go watch uh, the shuttle. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Like my my brother um, was working out in Ibiza uh, for one of, for one of the years, or Ibiza as you guys would call it probably, um, and he he was DJing over there, and now he's built himself a pub in his shed. So oh. he's got a, a great place called Fred's Bar, and his name isn't Fred. I don't know who Fred is, <laughs> but it's but cool. it's Fred's Bar. <laughs> That's awesome. So this year we're like Matt said, we're both going full time with Mover and Shaker. Um, definitely looking to do a lot more traveling and. and events. Uh, yeah. Some of the things we have on our list are San Antonio Cocktail Conference in Texas, uh, Bartenders Weekend in San Diego, uh, we'll be at Portland Cocktail Week again, uh, Tales on the Road in Puerto Rico, that's in March. Okay. So we kind of have uh, a nice little list of, of travels and vacation, and uh, yeah. like I said, we want to get out on the market, we want to meet all these bartenders, uh, of fans, course, whoever. Yeah, fans, supporters, you. and and we want to check out bars, you know, that's, that's what I'm into. And, and, uh, the whole like concept of mover and shaker was to take the hospitality aspect and put that into a, like a brand for bartenders. So yeah, yeah. I want them to take pride in it. And I also want to like give that love back. So that's why we donate a lot. We, we always are reposting bartenders, uh, sharing their stories, stuff like that. So we have a lot of, a lot of cool concepts for 2019. Uh, and now that we have a little more time, we'll be able to execute those. Yeah. So that was awesome. our, that was our struggle in 2018 was he was working 40 hours a week. I was working 40 plus hours a week and then we we're working 40 more on, on top of it, Yeah. So we were both about... run thin. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I think we both still are, but at least it's doing, you know, what we want to do. Yeah. It's all about the hustle life. <laughs> yeah. Always, man. Got to have multiple hustles. <laughs> Uh, right, cool, man. Um, so I've got a little bunch of questions that I ask everyone that comes on this show, uh, which okay. I hope you'll indulge me in. Um, yes. So how do you actually introduce yourself to new people? So do you introduce yourself as a bartender or more from the mover and shaker side or what? Uh, shoot. Oh, it depends on the context, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, I, I do really take pride in what we do, so I do like to kind of explain it because a lot of people will uh, not understand the enamel aspect um, mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's really cool um, and what I want to do is kind of instill that like childlike wonderment of uh, like the flair aspect and, and make bartending fun because I feel like craft got so serious at one point that it kind of took away from what it was and it had a little pretentiousness and I want to like I think now it's it's back but I want to draw like more fun and excitement to what what bartending is you know it's it's about making the guests happy and, and that's what I want to do yeah awesome Cool. Um, how did you become a bartender in the first place? Uh, so I actually went to school for finance, and I was actually working for an insurance company as well uh, <laughs> about six, seven years ago. Um, kind of just ended up hating the cubicle life. Uh, took some time off, traveled around a bit, uh, New Hampshire, Colorado, um, moved back home, and I moved to a more touristy part of Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas very hospitality driven, and uh, at the time I was really into craft beer, and okay. and I really wanted to work for a brewery, but I didn't know anybody yet. So what I did was I started working behind the bar, uh, just bar backing, and I pretty much just like fell in love with it. I took took really fast to it. I picked up all the you know classic cocktail books, uh, Death and Co's book, Dave Arnold's Liquid Intelligence, you know all those classic uh, cocktail books. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I like just sat down and I just read those like front to back as fast as possible because I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> but I wanted to really bad. I, I take pride in you know knowing what I'm doing and, and being, like feeling confident. Um, so it it led me to the world of spirits, which I knew nothing about, and I just like fell in love with spirits and uh, kind of just put uh, beer and craft beer on the back burner and uh, just d dove into that world. Just cool. Had, <laughs> now it is it's one of these addictive things isn't it once you get involved like and you you find something you're like oh that little threat i'm just gonna pull that and oh oh yeah. look at these drinks this is new <laughs> yeah, look at this drink. See, I, I think for me it's the historical aspect i mean you have spirits from all over the world and you have all these mm. great bartenders and, and styles and it was something that was really cool for me to learn about 
what is your number one tip for new bartenders? I think, like I said before, you know, it doesn't matter. The cocktail doesn't really matter. It's the experience the, the guest mm-hmm. has and how you make them feel. Yeah. Um, and that's something I have to remind, my, remind myself as well. You know, when you're stressed out behind the bar, it's uh, customers. That's the reason we're there. Yeah. Have fun make happy, rather than... <laughs> make it memorable. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. You walk into a new bar. What is the first drink you order? Like, if you kind of want to gauge how sure. how good the bartenders are. Sure, uh, I'm I'm a spirit forward guy. Like I said, I work for a, a whiskey company, so I like to taste the booze if I'm going to taste the cocktail. And uh, I think my go-to is a Boulevardier. So nice, strong and bitter. <laughs> Absolutely, such a bartender drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Matt, for you, what would you drink? Um, let's see, a soda water with a lime. Okay. <laughs> so as long as they that and i'm good to go yeah that's the other thing like i'm not actually a, a drinker at all okay so I just like but i enjoy the world i've learned learned a lot about spirits through nick and through a, a lot of our clients so i still have that respect for it and understand how awesome it is and how awesome the community is i don't know if you guys have cool. angry lemon lime soda over there but this yeah. guy loves well, look, i'm trying to get the sponsorship over here from <laughs> No, cool. I mean, I guess it keeps the line straighter on the pins. If you... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the one that keeps us in line for sure. He's the responsible one. It's, it's <laughs> Absolutely. <a good>, uh... <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so if you could sit at any bar in the world, where would you be? Ooh. Doesn't have to be one you've been to or one that's even still open. So like, if you want to go back in time or if you want to go... Sure. You know. uh, I, I have two... Uh, Always a huge fan of Amori Margo. Not sure if you've been mm-hmm. there in New York City. Uh, Southern Tea runs an awesome program. The whole concept's amazing. And, uh, All sturdy yeah, better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just always felt very comfortable at that bar. And then uh, favorite, second favorite bar, definitely Sweet Liberty in Miami. It's just okay. a beautiful bar, uh, great atmosphere, and the energy there is just impeccable as well. Awesome. Cool. And... <laughs> And if you can only drink one cocktail for the rest of your life, is it still going to be that Boulevardier, or are you going to go for something different? I'll, I'll go something different. Okay. I do love tiki cocktails, so the painkiller is pain definitely up there, yeah. Kind, kind of a dark rum pina colada for people that aren't as familiar at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's I'll a good choice. On the side, but, you know, it's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There are so many bartenders that go to a pina colada when you ask them that question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it fits every occasion. I'm a sucker for, like, frozen anything. Ice cream, uh, cocktails, like, I can't, <laughs> I can't not do it. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got one that um, we've been doing at the TGR Fridays that I'm working at at the moment. It was one of the bartenders there that created it, and it's across the whole estate now. Oh, um, cool. It's, it's called a candy cloud. So you're going to love this if you like your ice cream, right? <laughs> So yeah. it's uh, it's Jack Daniel's honey, um, oh. absolute vanilla, a little bit of bubblegum syrup and grenadine, and then vanilla ice cream, a little bit of crushed ice, and then that gets a popping candy rim on the glass, and then cotton candy on top. <laughs> like there's there's a picture on my Instagram, <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's quite outrageous when you see it. Uh, the the can uh, the cotton candy looks a lot like your president's hair. So, <laughs> uh, let's not even go there. <laughs> That's a whole other. <laughs> I know, I know. You guys have had a great time in Florida the, just the recently, Rosa right? Trump, future mover <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, guys. Is there anything else you you guys want to plug? Right, this is your moment to plug your social media and um, let everyone know when your uh, flair bartending flair is going to be released because <laughs> sure. we know it's got to be coming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just thanks everybody for the support. Obviously follow us on Instagram at mover and shaker co uh, website, mover and shaker uh, We love all you guys. Thanks for everybody who supported us. Montenegro yeah. for net million other brands to name. Angostura. Uh, Love all you guys and our fans. Thank you for having us on here. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's an awesome experience and, and we're really, honestly, pleasured. So, thank you. Thank yeah, you so much, guys. Barware, bar yeah. new pins, new shirts. Every, uh, every Sunday. <laughs> every, every Sunday. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Definitely let us know when the barware's coming and stuff as well, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll have a shout. And if there's a lot of stuff to chat about, we'll we'll get you back on it again. Yeah, absolutely, man. Great, man. Thanks for having us. Cool. Thank you, guys. We yeah. will see you again soon. All right. Adios. Cool. So there you have it, guys. Go and check out the guys over at uh, moverandshakerco.com. Uh, you can buy all of their pins online there. They did have a sale for Black Friday, but you've missed it by the time you're watching this. Sorry. On next week's show, we have yet another guest. We have Fabiano Latham joining us, who is the UK Raker ambassador, talking about adventurivity, which is a combination of adventure and creativity and how it can make you a better bartender. So join us for that next week on the bartenderhq.com podcast. Mm-hmm.